Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. Thank you for jumping into the webinar today. I think we've got a pretty good attendance so far. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and get started. Don't want to keep anybody waiting. Um, this is kind of a new topic for us, uh, workflow and business development. So if you're familiar with the workflow, we will be covering that to start. And then I'll kind of be covering, you know, how you can build out that workflow to to kind of do a, a little sales process and business development process, you know, go find new um, new clients, new contacts to to reach out to and, and email and hopefully get some new get some new customers. Um, this webinar will be recorded too, so if you um, if you have to drop early, um, you'll be uh, you'll be getting an email at the end. Actually, one day from now, basically, you'll get the email with the the link to the recording. If um if you have you know colleagues that had registered aren't or are not able to attend they'll also get the the same email too so no worries there i also have uh jack on the line uh who runs our support team he'll be answering any questions as we go along so feel free to put any questions into the questions section uh if if he can he'll get to them kind of on the fly otherwise we'll have a couple minutes at the end of the webinar to to run through some questions and and jack if there's any that seem like a good question for the whole group you can just kind of skip over those and we'll cover them kind of show off to the to the whole group so yeah this is like i said it's a new topic for us so just kind of bear with me i'm kind of still feeling out what i want to cover but you know the 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 backbone of cats is really the workflow and and you know the statuses that you can assign the records so we're all familiar with candidates and how candidates can have statuses but the same way that works, you know, companies, jobs, and contacts can also have statuses. So I'm going to go into the administration section by clicking settings up here in the upper right. Go to administration. Obviously, you know, by the name of it, you do need to be a site administrator to get to this setting, but um, feel free to share this video with your site admin or, or work together with them to build out your workflow and build out kind of your sales client outreach process. So very first setting on the page is workflow and we're going to jump to the bottom and look at the companies and contact statuses so we're not touching candidates today we'll be looking at we'll look at companies first um so the first time you know we could you probably want to have companies new companies that you add to the software maybe come in as a lead and you can always rearrange these statuses too by just clicking the, the arrows here and dragging it to the top so um, that way, if I add a new company, it's going to come in as a lead. And then first contact, second contact, those don't really make a ton of sense, but um, those would make more sense for an actual person. So we're going to jump into contacts next and and change those statuses a little bit. So go back to the workflow and go to contact. And this is where you could kind of build out, you know, your sales pipeline. So uh we'll look at grabbing people from linkedin in a second but the the very first status in the list is going to be what a kind of a new contact would be added as so if i'm just adding a contact with the the plus sign up here and i just choose add contact uh, they would come in with that no status status that doesn't really make a ton of sense so maybe i'm just going to call it you know cold or something right now and that way they haven't been talked to at all and then you could go in and build in kind of your process. How many times do you want to actually contact this person before you, you know, maybe put them as, you know, a, a not interested or something like that. So I could add a new status, say, you know, declined, not interested. And maybe I want to add a prerequisite or something. So, you know, if you're, you know, you actually have to do a reach out or something before they can be called not interested. You can't just tell that they're not interested until you actually talk to them. So um, we could maybe say that and add the prerequisite. That way, if I do reach out and they're not interested, I can move them and we can kind of ignore them going forward. So um, what we'll look at next, and this is obviously just kind of an example site. So these might, this, this whole process might not make a ton of sense, but that's that's kind of up for you guys to decide and how to build your sales process, build in, you know, what, what steps you want to do before you, you know, put somebody on the back burner or um, how many times you want to reach out. So I just have two reach outs in here right now. So we'll start with cold. We'll go first, second. 
maybe if they are interested, um, we can get a call scheduled with them and, you know, talk about any positions they need filled, get that job order information, get other information like benefits packages and things in that intro call, and then, you know, get the business and start start recruiting for them. So um, you can also use statuses kind of as a an indicator of, you know, that person's position in the company. You can, obviously you can use the title field for the contact too. So you could put them as the hiring manager or something, or, you know, the HR person. Um, but you could use a status too, if you want to, you know, once you've finished with the intro call or something like that, you could just um, change their status to something like hiring manager or point of contact or, you know, decision maker or something like that. Um, it's been a while since I've been in the sales game, but I think that makes sense to kind of label them that way. Um, but yeah, the main thing that's going to be really powerful with the workflow then is using these triggers. So on the right side of the page, we have the plus sign where you can add a trigger. So I could just click that. Easiest one to add is an email trigger. Um, basically, I can say first reach out email, give it a name. And then I can choose how the trigger is going to behave. So um, if I go to change the candidate status, I want that trigger to show up and I can kind of see the email template right up right away. I can set it to optional on. If I want to set it up so it has to get sent every time, I can actually make it required. And if I have multiple triggers on a status, because you can have multiple different emails, um, maybe it's better to have them optional off by default, and then you can kind of choose which one to send. So it's kind of up to you guys how that how you want that to, to behave, but I'll go through it as an example in a second here once I'm done building this. So um, next field, very easy, just the from field. You know, do you want it to be from you or do you want it to be from a specific email address? You could put in, you know, a, a no reply or a, you know, contact at company.com or something, you know, simple like that. Um, otherwise, just leave it as user performing action and you can also append your signature to it then if you want to. So the to field is very simple. Obviously, we need an email address in this field. So I'm going to use the tags over on the right side here and search for email. Any field in the system can be added as a tag to the workflow. So it's really the best practice to come in and search for what you're looking for so you don't have to scroll through kind of your whole list of fields. Obviously, we're looking for contact information, not candidate or company information. So if I just search email, I can come down and find the contact email. And then you just kind of click and drag it into that to field. So that'll be sent to the contact email. If I wanted to you know, copy somebody else on here, I could put another email in, but we'll just leave it like that right now. Um, let's see. And then, you know, on the subject line, you might want to put in something like your company name. I think it's under the other. Yes, there it is. So it's under the other section. So this would be kind of your company name in cats, you know. So let's say introducing my agency and say, you know, other company name. That's probably a terrible sales subject line, but um, we'll leave it for you guys to um, come up with something a little catchier. But you know anything anything works in these in these fields. You can kind of grab in you know my your own name. Um, you can put in you know phone numbers. You can put in a link to your calendar too. So if you did have your calendar your meeting scheduler set up in Cats, you could you could drop that in there, and that's really nice. Um, so you could say you know hello, and then you say name. Let's go find the contact name. There it is. First name is best you know, reaching out to see if you have any positions that you're struggling to fill. We are experts at blah, 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 blah. You know, type your nice sales email in there. Um, and then calendar link would be a really nice thing to add if they wanna maybe just schedule a quick call with you to chat. You can just drop in that scheduling URL tag. Um, you know, and then, you know, sign it off with your name. Obviously, if you have your email signature, um, you don't need to do that. You could just, you know, use your email signature. Otherwise, drop in your own name there. 
And then you can actually cho choose to schedule these. So it might not make sense to schedule this one now, but um, we do have a couple different options. You can do next morning, next afternoon, or you could do a specific time. So you can say something like next day um, and then a certain time. Let's see. Sorry, I was just reading something there. Um, and then if you did have kind of an attachment, sometimes you might want to add, you know, a summary about your company or what your company offers, a nice PDF or something. You could add that attachment and that way it's going to get sent every time. Um, so I'm just going to add this for now and then we will um, we'll go kind of look at how it works. So real quickly, I'll go to my companies and then I will choose a company. And I have the contacts kind of right at the top here. Um, by default, it should it's probably going to be at the bottom for you. But I like to move it to the top. You can just use this little arrow here to bump it to the top. That way, it's kind of the first thing that you see. And you can see we have two contacts at this XYZ software company. They are both cold right now. So you basically would work through the list of contacts kind of the same way you would work a job, you know, contacting these candidates one by one and, um, you know, with a phone call, an email, or um, even a text message would work. Um, so the first thing you would do is probably log an activity. You could, you know, preview some information about them. If you wanted to, you can preview information about the company, any attachments, any notes. And then the feed is going to be here too, which is kind of a, a list of everything that has happened. But um, basically, there's no re real resume to look at since it's not a candidate. You're kind of just kind of looking at maybe the company info or something like that. So um, from the panel here, we could email them. Um, or we could log an activity. That's probably the, the best way to do it. So it's just kind of call and talk to them or call and leave a voicemail. You could say left voicemail and log the activity that way. Otherwise, um, you could change their status too. So after maybe after logging that activity, saying left voicemail, I move them to that first reach out. And now I have the email ready to go, you know, hey, David, I just left you a voicemail, you know, just wanted to introduce myself and then send that email. So um, you could do it all at once, too. I know some people, it kind of depends on your sales process. You know, some people like to call, leave a voicemail first and then follow up with an email. Um, otherwise, you can just click on the status to change it. And that's going to queue up that email automatically to get sent. Maybe you want to email them first and then, you know, promise to call them again later. Um, it really is up to you how you how you want to do kind of your business development. But um, if we're looking at the trigger here, this is remember I had it as optional on, so it is on by default when I go to this status. If I had it optional off, it would appear like this, and then I would be able to choose that I want to send it. So that's kind of the difference between that trigger behavior that I was describing earlier. Another really really um, popular thing to do in the, in the sales world is to you know set tasks and set reminders kind of follow-ups for yourself so um you know i would probably want to add a task to this first candidates this first contact status here so i would just click the green plus sign again to add another trigger and then you know i have a couple of different options i can send a calendar event that doesn't make sense for right now really um, but creating a task would work and i'll probably want to keep that as optional on as well Going to assign it to myself, give it a priority. I could say average due in one day and then follow up with contact name from company name. There we go, a contact company. So that way I kind of know what that task is and I can go and add that. And if I'm back in that company again and I click on the status to change it to that first reach out, now I have that email ready to go and I have that task ready to go. And this is why I was saying, you know, you might want to change how these triggers appear because if you add more than one, it can kind of get a little long there. So sometimes it's nice to just see the list and then, you know, grab them. So maybe I, maybe I just leave a voicemail today and I just want to create a task to, send them an email tomorrow or something like that. I could just mark that as called left voicemail and then create a task for myself. Um, oh shoot, I don't have a, I'm logged in as a weird user right now. So that's why it says cat support. I wonder if that'll still work though. I can just go ahead and go ahead and save that. 
now I've got a task there. It didn't did not change its status. I swear it did. Yeah, so there it is. First reach out. You can find your tasks under the more section, and then you can go to tasks. And I bet you it's because, yeah, I'm logged in as a weird user right now. Let me log out and log back in as a, a real person. Um, here we go, Jeff Recruiter. Go back to that company. We'll change another person's status real quick. First reach out. Don't need to send the email right now. We'll say a voicemail. We'll email tomorrow. Change that. And you can see it does appear in the feed down here. So you can kind of see kind of what's going on. And if I go to the more section, I go to tasks. Um, you can see, oh no, the tasks, the tags aren't working in here. Well, good thing we have Jack on the line. He'll ticket this up as a nice, a nice bug. But um, if I click on the task, I can kind of see the description of it. I can make some notes or I could just, you know, mark it complete. Over on the far right side, um, I have the option to mark it complete, push it one week or just delete it. So this is kind of how you could build your to-do list as you work throughout the day. You can have those tasks set up and then the next day you come in and you have your kind of your full list of tasks to go through and it is pretty easy to work from this page too i could preview this person right from here and do all the same things i was doing in that company so i could kind of work right down this list um, and just go one record to another i've got a bunch of them that are kind of overdue i'm going to clean those up really quick and just delete them and then we have one that's completed. I'll just click that to hide the completed ones. And we can sort and kind of filter on these two. So maybe I don't need to see everything. I can just, you know, look for the next 24 hours or the next 48 hours. I can also, if there's a lot of tasks on here, I can come here and quickly just say assign to me. So that way I'm just working off the stuff that I kind of assigned to myself or or somebody else assigned to me. Um, so tasks are kind of a, a really helpful part of the kind of the sales process. Um, and that's basically what you would be doing is, you know, logging activities. Um, if you're calling them, you basically just come here and click log an activity, call talked, called that voicemail, called missed, um, put some notes in and then change their status. So you would, you know, move them to first reach out, maybe second reach out the next time and so on down the line. Um, another way I've seen people work in the software would be with um, with lists. So if you don't want to, um, if you don't want to use tasks, so you you could use them both still. But another another popular way to do it would be to use lists. And um, basically, lists are just kind of like a folder of candidates or contacts or companies. And they, you would just you know add contacts to a list, and then you could come into the list and kind of work through it the same way I would work through my tasks. So I could still preview the person here, come in, change their status send all the emails I need to send, log the activities. And then if you're going to be working in this list, kind of, you know, just crushing through some phone calls and things, um, it's helpful to set up your columns to see what you want to see. So that is done with this little icon down here. You can click here and choose columns. It's maybe, for example, I want their phone number on here. Um, and I want to see that kind of right next to their name. Um, another thing would be, you know, any activity. Or, um, you know, I want to see maybe a preview of the last activity so I can see kind of what's happened with them. And date is also really nice too. So date candidates last updated, we want to maybe want to put that very up right next to the name. Um, and if I hit save, it's kind of rearranged that and I can see, you know, who's been updated recently. I can see their phone number. I can see kind of a quick glimpse of what's happened recently. And then obviously I could see their status over here. So these are candidates. So the statuses are not quite the same as a, a contact, but it would work the same way um, for contacts. And then if I want to dive into it a little bit more, I could just preview the person and and look at their look at their activity. So I can see, you know, this guy's got some calendar events going on. He's been we've been texting him. Um, so I can get a quick glimpse of, of what's happening with this record, you know, while I'm dialing them or, or while I'm writing an email to them. So um, 
you don't always have to use the triggers to make these tasks and things too. It is just the triggers are kind of just a nice shortcut for you to quickly and kind of automatically make those those tasks. But you can do it from the panel right here too. So if you did just maybe call and leave a voicemail for this guy, um, you could just you know write that down and then jump here to task, make the task for yourself and save it, and then kind of move on to the next record. You can also use the arrow keys um, when you're when you have this panel open to kind of go from from one record to the other, um, or you can just use the arrows kind of right at the top. Um, let's see here. Let's see if I've got any questions or anything coming in. I don't see anything yet. Well, the one thing I wanted to show was um, the browser extension. This might be this might be something that you guys are familiar with already, but um, in case you're not, we will pull open LinkedIn and then I'll actually go back to cats really fast. Um, browser extension, you can find that on cats1.com slash downloads. So if I go to cats1.com slash downloads, it should load. There it is. Browser extension works for Chrome and Firefox. It also works for Microsoft Edge. If you wanted to use it with Microsoft Edge, you could just um, use the Chrome version. It is basically kind of the same under the hood. So um, anything, any sites that have kind of a candidate profile, you would be able to to grab that profile and, and add it into CATS. So LinkedIn's obviously the popular one. It does also work with places like Monster and Career Builder um, and Indeed. Um, but yeah, we'll just show LinkedIn for now. Let's go find, oh, there he is, there's Jack. Let's go find Jack, and then if I load up his page here, you can see that the icon did not light up. It should light up, it must have been signed out or something. Weird. You gotta click on my name. Oh, I was just a search result? Oh, that's why. I thought it was on your profile. Ta-da, it's working. Um, so yeah, here I am on Jack's page. I think I'm connected with him, so I'm gonna get a little bit more information than than you might. Um, but that is, it is helpful to connect with, with the person on LinkedIn and then that way, you know, I can get his phone number. If he's sharing his email on LinkedIn, I can, um, you know, I would see that email too. And I'm actually adding him as a contact right now. You know, you can add them as candidates if you want. That is kind of the, the most common way we see people use the browser extension, but you can add them as a contact also, and then you can actually add them as, you know, to a specific company. Otherwise, it's going to try and grab his company from his profile, and it would create a company record for him. So, um, and if you look here, we do do a little bit of duplicate detection on the front end. We look for their email or their social media URL. So, if that exists in CATS, we will kind of tell you that this person's already in there. You can pop over to view them or just do an update and kind of update their record if they've you know, maybe added a new work history item or something like that. So um, here's where I could add him and then I could just click add to cats. It's gonna think for a quick second and tell me that it's been added and I can just click view and that would pop him open in cats and, and show me his record. I actually didn't add him to this site though because I'm, I'm logged into like a different site, but it does work, trust me on that. Um, Let's see. A couple other things I want to touch on, and then we'll we'll take time for questions. Really, just emails and the dashboard. So um, when you are sending emails out of cats, we do have some stats on those, and that's specifically mass emails. Um, so I could click more and go to emails here. And if I'm sending a, a mass email, that would be, you know, an email to more than one person technically. This is a bad site example. I'm going to jump into a better one. Um, we will, you'll be able to find the statistics like opens and clicks on that site. And then um, you'll be able to um, resend them or, or try other things. So if I go to more and then emails again, you can see, you know, we've sent something to, this is me, Jeff testing a big email to 12 people. Um, and I can see, you know, how many people it bounced for. It bounced for two people, six people opened it. I could preview the email if I just take a look at it here. Um, otherwise, I could click on it 
and kind of pull open kind of a little bit better stats on it. So we can see that six people opened it. The, the clicks means that somebody clicked a link in the email. So if you have a link in the email that's clickable, we would be able to track who clicked it and, and what happened. Um, bounces, unsubscribe, and spam, pretty self-explanatory. Um, and I can filter this list too. So maybe I want to go target, you know, everybody that opened the email. I could quickly, you know, find those people, select them with the checkboxes. And um, I swear we added a way to resend from here. Oh, I think we did. Copy the selected email. Oh yeah, it's up at the top. Copy them or just resend it to those people. So um, I could pull those three people in and now I'm kind of resending an email. It doesn't have to be this one either. You know, I could load up a different template. If you want to, you can, you know, type a new email or load a new template and then kind of retarget these same people. Say, hey, I saw you maybe open my email, you know, let me know if you're still interested, something like that. So um, that is kind of how mass emailing would work. So it depends kind of what kind of sales you're doing, how you want to do your outreach. Um, whether it's one by one, kind of working down a, a list of contacts at a company or, or reaching out to a whole group at once. A lot of different ways you could do it. Um, but yeah, that's, that's briefly touching on email. We do have um, a nice feature when you're emailing out of cats to um, use your own domain instead of cats, because by default, cats is kind of sending the emails for you. We still set it so that your the replies go to you. Obviously, you send an email, you get the reply back, but it technically is through CATS. Um, so you can add a custom email domain and actually kind of verify your own domain. That way we are sending through your domain. And that what, really what it does is it just improves deliverability um, because we have a lot of customers using email out of CATS you know, inevitably there's going to be some bounces and some unsubscribes from, from some of those emails. So our domain reputation, it's still pretty good. We do see pretty good results with it, but it's not going to be, you know, as perfect as, you know, a fresh domain of yours or, you know, a domain that's, that you guys are, you know, being responsible emailers for um, in your own domain. So um, you could just come here and click configure. I could say, you know, cats1.com, click continue. Oh no. It doesn't work. I think cats1.com is used by another domain, so you're going to have to use a subdomain. Oh, bummer. Just do like test dot or kitten. This is probably illegal. Um, <laughs> whatever. It's, it, it's really simple. Honestly, you just come in and it will give you some items to copy. So if I kind of go to our knowledge base and custom email domains, basically when I put in my domain, like I was trying to do there, you will get the three, three items to copy and put on your DNS settings or your DNS records. So um, whoever's kind of in charge of your website or your email, this should be pretty, pretty straightforward for them. We do have some instructions for the various hosting places. GoDaddy is a popular one, um, pretty easy to do, Wix or Squarespace, um, and then a number of others. But that will just basically make sure that you're emailing from your domain. You should see a little bit better deliverability and, and response rates, fewer bounces and things. Um, so there's that, and then there's the dashboard. I'm on the kitten this kitten test site here. So my dashboard is kind of crazy because I use this to play around a lot. But um, by default, you know, if we just have, I think by default, your dashboard is going to look kind of something like this. You have these different, you know, active jobs, status summaries, but we do have a number of, um, number of kind of contact company related widgets as well. So, um, you know, for example, the company status summary would be a good one. And you can add widgets just by using this green plus sign here. As if you noticed, I quickly kind of switched between the dashboards too with this little thing. And I can add a new dashboard with this menu here. So I could just, um, you can kind of create maybe a sales dashboard or a new dashboard for yourself and then switch between them. Um, 
And then the, the widgets that might be helpful for sales would be contacts and companies. You can mark hot companies, hot contacts. You could have a quick summary of those contact statuses. So, you know, how many people are currently in that first reach out or second reach out phase, company status summary, pretty self-explanatory too. Um, activity summary would kind of just be a list of recent things that have happened, emails, calls, voicemails. Um, it shows up kind of right down here. So I haven't been doing a lot on this site, but I can, you know, I've seen 14 emails in the last seven days. Um, but this would track, you know, those calls, call missed, call voicemail or call talked, and then um, text messages, emails, and um, you can filter that, you know, by all users or maybe just the current user, that would be you or a specific user if you want to kind of track a different person um, and just see, you know, the number of change over the last last seven days. So if, if that's a common sales thing is, you know, you have a number of emails or a number of calls you want to hit or you want to make and you want to make sure you're getting that number. Um, other popular widgets would be upcoming tasks or overdue tasks. That way you don't have to click more and go to tasks. You could kind of see your overdue or upcoming tasks right on the dashboard and, and jump in there to to immediately kind of you know start calling people or start working down that list. So that is um that's kind of how you could build a little a little sales dashboard for yourself. Um, lastly, I know I touched on the meeting scheduler really quickly. So I'm just going to cover that really fast. It is um, up here under my profile. So you would kind of click your little letter and uh, go to my profile. Um, you can add a profile picture. So at the very bottom of the page, I could upload a, a picture of myself and that way it would you know, change this icon. Instead of the J for Jeff, it would just be my picture. And then it would show up um, on the meeting scheduler too. So meeting scheduler is a feature you can just come here and turn on. If I copy that link and open it up in a new tab, it's going to show my availability for today or tomorrow. And I don't think I have a, a ton for today, but tomorrow I've got a lot of blocks open. You can choose what windows you give them to. We, by default, it just lets them choose 15, 30, or 60, but you could, you could just send a version of this with only 60 minutes or only 15 minutes if you wanted. Um, obviously, this is gonna work really well with calendar sync turned on. Otherwise, we don't really do a good job of, we don't know your availability. If you're using Google or Outlook, you know, this looks at the cat's calendar. But if you turn calendar sync on, then obviously we sync with your Google or your Outlook and we do know your availability. So with those two kind of working in conjunction, you can, you know, really easily schedule meetings with people and, um, you know, pick a time that you're both available for. There are a couple settings on here too. I could click configure here and choose my office hours. I can also choose buffer time, notice time, and, and a future window. Maybe I don't wanna be booked further than two weeks out or further than one week out. Um, or I want, you know, four hours. I don't wanna be surprised with the last minute meeting. Um, or I don't want back-to-back -back meetings. I want, you know, 15 minutes in between meetings. Um, so those are kind of some settings you can set there. And, that's about it, I think. I did touch on texting. Texting is pretty easy to turn on. You would just come here, click configure and choose an area code. Um, you can text candidates and contacts from the software. It's gonna show up nicely as a little conversation window down here. Um, and we do have templates that you can add for text messages too. So if you are kind of introducing yourself, you could send a, a common template to them right off the bat. Um, we do have nice help articles on all these features too. So I always wanna kind of wrap up with touching on the support options available for you. So knowledge base, obviously pretty self-explanatory. I kind of showed you that earlier, um, but you could search for texting here and, and kind of learn how to set up texting. Um, same with the meeting scheduler um, and all that other stuff. Browser extension, if you wanna come here, we'll link you to our downloads page um, and kind of walk you through how the browser extension would work. And then we have the list of all the sites that the browser extension works on here as well. So if you're doing kind of sourcing for leads, you know, LinkedIn's gonna be the, kind of the only place you could do that. Maybe indeed, but LinkedIn would be good. Otherwise, Twitter, I guess, could work too. Um, but yeah, I think we might have a question or two in here. So I'm gonna just pause, read through these really quickly, and then we'll see if any of them 
I can answer. So let's see. I had a question about, are we able to change fields? Um, yeah, that's, um, if you're just talking about kind of basic information fields, like for like on a company record um, or a contact record, that can be done under the administration section. We have a section called custom fields. Otherwise you could also do it just from this page itself. So I could click this little icon here and choose customize fields that will kind of unlock this page here. This is nice to be able to hide fields. So if you're not using some of these fields, you can go ahead and click the eyeball to hide them. Otherwise you can click add custom field and choose kind of what type of field you want it to be. So, you know, maybe you want, this is a bad example because it's a company, but you could have a field for degree level and then, you know, you know, things like that. Oops, caps lock. Add that. It's going to kind of get shown at the very bottom, but I can also kind of drag and drop these around so I can move that up and then just hit save. And this is going to be the same whether I'm on a company, a job, a candidate, or a contact. Um, so that's kind of how you can customize those fields. Um, for work history, you are you are not able to customize those fields right now. Um, I had a question about the width of the columns. Unfortunately, no, the the column widths are kind of determined by you know what type of field. I know we have maybe some areas of improvement there that we could make. For example, this status column is very long. But you know, technically, I guess you could have a longer status name. Um, my best suggestion would just be to um, kind of play around with the order of them. You can come here and click columns and kind of drag and drop them to, to kind of change the order and kind of make the best use of, of kind of the space that they take up. We have one question about um, people applying for, you know, unqualified positions, particularly if they're out of state or something. Um, we don't, we can't really touch on the location that they're applying from, but you could ask a question and, and kind of, it does rely on them answering correctly. So, you know, for example, I have an application here. I'll just go to like my general application. You know, we could add a question for, like you said, are you located in Minnesota? Um, and we would maybe just want to do a drop down. Yes, no. And then at the very bottom, we have that question I just created, are you located in Minnesota? And I could add a trigger to the question. And if they say no, I have a couple options. I could just reject them. That would not add them to the software at all. Um, or I could choose do not add to pipeline. They would still get added to CATS, but they wouldn't be added to the job that they're applying for. So kind of two ways you could do that. It's up to you to choose how strict you want to be with it. But it does have to look for a, an answer to a question. So you would have to kind of get creative with phrasing your question in a way that, you know, then you can go target that answer and, and do something about it. So um, let's see. Can tags be imported from LinkedIn to cats via the extension? Unfortunately, not right now. Um, that is something that we could definitely look into. I'm not sure. I haven't 
looked at LinkedIn very much about. And they even have, I guess they have like skills, don't they? Jack has 36 skills here. Um, so that's probably what you're referring to. That's something we could look at for sure. Um, I know our our sister company, Top Echelon, does have kind of a little bit more robust tagging system. And they would definitely be able to probably do something like this. Um, LinkedIn Recruiter has a tag system similar to ours. I think that's what Michael's referring to. Gotcha. But but still no. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, the answer is still no there. I don't have an answer on when we could make that happen. I would love to, we would love to work with LinkedIn Recruiter and build a better integration with them. Um, our requests have fallen on deaf ears over the past five, seven, ten years. Um, if you'd like to submit a request on our behalf, we would be, we would love that. But um, the more people we can get kind of making noise about wanting to integrate with CATS, the better. And perhaps we can get that done someday. But they are hard to work with, I'll say that. Somebody said LinkedIn wants you to live 100% inside of LinkedIn. That is true. Uh, yeah, I, both LinkedIn and Indeed seem to be trying to become an applicant tracking system. So we're trying to eat our lunch. So looks like the questions are kind of dying out now. Um, once again, you know, Definitely just don't hesitate to reach out to us and support. You know, you can contact us with this little icon here. You'll see me and Jack's lovely faces there and um, just shoot us an email. Otherwise, um, you know, like I said, this will this was recorded. So everything will be emailed over to you um, in one day. So just look out for that. Uh, any integration with PEO? No, we do not. All of our integrations can be found under the administration section. Um, so there's kind of where you can find a list of every software that we do integrate with. All righty. Looks like some people are already. Over, uh, I was just going to say, I just checked over uh, Zapier as well, and I don't think they have uh, Trinet or PEO. I don't think they have an integration through Zapier, but I did want to mention that we do have that option for a lot of other systems as well. Um, so That's we true. do have a little Zapier bit of extra. Yeah, yeah, if there's something that CATS doesn't integrate with, Zapier is a good um, option to kind of build out a connection with CATS to Zapier. So we might have to do a whole webinar on Zapier at some point in the near future. Um, but they do work with a ton of different softwares. All right, thank you everybody. Hope this was helpful. Hope you learned something at least. And um, yeah, thanks for coming. Have a great rest of the day. Bye.